Hello, everyone. Philip Lee returning with a new edition of Civil War Chat. It's Thursday, the 11th of November, excuse me, the 17th of November, 2022. Click on the subscribe button here in the lower right to subscribe to future episodes and the notification bell in the far upper right to be notified when they're released. If you do that, we click on that. You're going to have a wonderful Thanksgiving and all your relatives are going to come. There'll be no political arguments. So click on that bell and make that magic happen. Uh, today's topic is a Jewish perspective on Arlington's Confederate monument. But before we get into that, I want to remind you, we are in be, engaged in a cultural war. There, there are power, uh, forces at work that want to destroy Southern heritage, destroy Confederate memory, destroy Confederate monuments. At some point, your children and grandchildren are going to ask you, uh, Dad, Mom, Granddad, Grandma, what did you do during the, during the, uh, the cultural wars against uh, confederate iconography and hopefully you'll have something to say but one of the things you can do is get the facts to defend these monuments and one way to do that is with the confederacy at flood tide by philip lee it's uh, 26 dollars at amazon and barnes and noble and other bookstores if you want an autographed copy from me email me phil p-h-i-l underscore lee l-e-i-g-h at me m-e dot com and that'll be $30, and I'll cover the postage if you live here in the United States. Okay. A Jewish perspective on Arlington's Confederate monument. The Advisory Committee on Arlington National Cemetery has recommended the removal of the 32-foot memor tall memorial to Confederate veterans buried there on the grounds that is, quote, riddled with racist iconography, close quote, and perpetuates the lost cause narrative. The following letter was sent today to the committee, and that was on November 3rd, 2022. This apparently originally appeared in James Bacon's Bacon's Rebellion blog. Okay, to begin with the letter. On March 19th, 1841, at the consecration of its new synagogue in Charleston, Rabbi Gustavus Ponsmansky rose to speak to a throng of his temple members and Charlestonians of many faiths who were invited to witness the important occasion. For centuries, Jews all over the world had sought to return to the promised land, and generations of families had vowed as much at their annual Passover cedar, quote, next year in Jerusalem, close quote. In a remarkable display of chutzpah, Rabbi Posnansky proclaimed, quote, this synagogue is our temple, this city is our Jerusalem, this happy land our Palestine, close quote. The Jews had finally found a home. In his book, American Jewry and the Civil War, Rabbi Bertram Korn, the recognized expert in the field, seems quite emphatic that during the antebellum period, Jews experienced a cultural and re religious renaissance in the South that was unrivaled. Jews who lived in the region adopted the Southern way of life with all its peculi peculiarities, including slavery, because for the first time in modern history, they were treated with dignity and respect and flourished culturally, politically, and economically on par with their Christian neighbors. Korn concluded, quote, Nowhere else in America, certainly not in, in, the, in the antebellum North, had the Jews accord, been accorded such an opportunity to be complete equals as in the South, close quote. And while we condemn the evils of slavery then and now all over the world, we cannot pass judgment on our ancestors as viewed through the 21st century lens of equity, diversity, and inclusion. No previous generation of Americans can survive such scrutiny. Francis Salvador of South Carolina was the first Jew elected to public office in the colonies when he was chosen for the Provincial Congress in 1774. David Uly and Judah Benjamin were chosen by their state legislatures, as was the practice then, to represent Florida and Louisiana in the U.S. Senate. They were the only Jewish senators during that period. After the war, Isaac Ike Herman a private in the 1st Georgia Infantry proclaimed, quote, I found, I found in the South an ideal and, har and harmonious people. They treated me as one of their own. In fact, for me, it was the land of Canaan. 
where milk, milk and honey flowed, close quote. Southern Jewry in the antebellum period had found in the South the haven from prejudice they had been looking for. No doubt this was on the mind of Moses Ezekiel when he designed and created the memorial at Arlington Cemetery. Arlington's monument is an important piece of American history, Jewish American history, and a significant work of art. Arlington itself is property originally seized from Confederate General Robert E. Lee's family. In an act of retribution, a deliberate attempt to prevent Lee and his descendants from ever being able to see their cherished home again. But in an ironic twist, the Lee home place at Arlington has become sacred ground, universally revered by all Americans. In the aftermath of the terror and hardship of war, Americans greatly desired to be done with the division and bitter sectional strife they had so recently endured. They wanted to reunite the country in a spirit of harmony. To that noble end, it was appropriate that in 1900, less than 40 years after Lee's surrender, Congress authorized the internment of the corporal remains of Confederate soldiers in the hallowed earth of Arlington. And in 1914, permission was gladly given to erect a prominent memorial to the Confederate dead in the midst of Arlington. This inspiring monument was erected to acknowledge the heroic manhood of Southern men who fought bravely against overwhelming odds and to acknowledge a former foe in a spirit of renewed friendship and kindred national sentiment. After all, in just a few years after the, the dedication of this beautiful monument, America would call on her sons to join the expedition to Europe to fight in World War I. Americans answered that call and fought side by side, Northerners and Southerners together, united in common, pur in common purpose. As President McKinley offered Southerners in 1898, quote, we should share with you the care of these graves of Confederate soldiers. Sectional feeling no longer holds back the love we feel for each other. The old flag again waves over us in peace with new glories, close quote. We have not seen so many other places around the world, have we not seen in so many other places around the world, that political disagreements have inflamed into civil war, which have carried on for generations, costing many unnecessary lives. Have we not seen that? We believe your committee, far removed from the actual conflict, should not assume the role of arbiter in this matter. Now, more than 100 years since its unveiling, you make pronouncements with no appreciation or regard for those who came before you and those who will follow. You cannot comprehend the hardships, the miseries, and the motivations of the men and women of both sides of this conflict who lived through this generational tsunami? Why must you call for these symbols of unity and reconciliation to be destroyed forever? Why must you insert your personal political ideologies of the moment for the time-honored traditions cultivated by generations of Americans? We ought to respect the decision of those men who were far closer to the conflict than we are and honor their efforts to set aside the horrors of war in the name of peace. Regardless of the political considerations, destroying or destroying or relocating this beautiful memorial would be the worst kind of vandalism and iconoclasm. Ezekiel is also buried there and Jewish law sharply condemns the excavation and removal of corpses from their grave sites even when they will be reburied elsewhere. Designed by Moses Ezekiel, America's first great Jewish sculptor and a veteran himself, the Arlington Confederate Monument is a true masterpiece. To remove, damage, or alter this great achievement by one of America's noblest sons would be a crime against history, against art, and against the spirit of reunification that led to its creation. Judaism teaches us that loved ones never die if there is someone left to remember them. This monument is testament to the memory of the thousands who died and brings comfort and solace to their descendants. descendants. We urge you to leave the Arlington Confederate Memorial exactly as our forefathers intended it. 
And this is signed by a number of prominent uh, Jewish men, one of whom I know personally and who is a graduate of Washington and Lee University. Moses Ezekiel, who designed the memorial, is a graduate of the Virginia Military Institute of Technology. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that is our show for today. Please take action to in, in this uh, cultural war to defend to defend Southern heritage and Confederate memory. Okay, thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you next time.